Now, everybody who's popped out by a mom who has a D that's below 40, they don't start off their life with a normal microbiome. And therefore, many of the things about neurologic development, both in utero and in early childhood, are linked to these things that are being provided by mom's microbiome when they're in utero and by the baby's microbiome as they're growing. So when you lose the microbiome, three major things are lost. Our ability to absorb and not overabsorb most of the small charged ions, iron, copper, manganese, all of these cofactors that are needed for various enzymes. The bugs have always played a role in those minerals being absorbed normally. They don't okay. just sit there. They actually secrete chemicals that are we absorb and play a role in our ability to notice, Am I, I, do I have too much iron? So the first article that really shows that the microbiome is involved in making sure that we have the right response to low iron. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a messenger that's extremely complex that's telling the bugs, whether or not I need to absorb iron. And it also talks about whether or not I'm in iron overload. That means that microbiome has always played a role in that. You have to view it through an evolutionary lens that says every single animal on this planet has these little enzymes that need one copper molecule or one zinc molecule. Somehow they've been managing it without us smart doctors helping them. It was yeah. natural and it just happened. Mm -hmm. So when you lost your D, the microbiome went away. And what I then learned was in order to bring back the microbiome, which you must do. So the sleep is dependent on the microbiome directly as well. So you have to not only give D, but you have mm -hmm. to give this stuff called B50, which is 50 milligrams or 50 micrograms of every one of the, yeah. it turns out there's a way to convert the microbiome, but it's not about dumping lactobacillus, a specific species. Mm -hmm. It's about getting the right growth factors for them, their requirements until the four healthy, happy spila are able to come back. Once they come back, then you have to stop the additional bees because our nervous system was actually created around their natural production. We only need the amount that they make. And then the vitamins do really bad things to you. I've been fully trained as have you that we take these blood levels and then we do things with them. None of, and for D we're using that because we still need it. But for none of these B vitamins, except for B12, is the blood level in any way related to what the neurologic symptoms are. Okay. They are not, it's, if you've ever gotten into this a little deeper, like magnesium blood levels have nothing to do with what your cell needs. And it has nothing to do with what your cells in the brain need, because even if you did the blood level, it wouldn't be about the CSF or the central nervous system area. So the other thing that's really creepy about this that makes it very difficult to sell to physicians and even to lay people is the only way you know if you're deficient in some of these things is by what your body tells you, which sounds totally flaky, but yeah. frankly, I had to learn that over time because I would be saying, hey, I'm the doctor, I've got the piece of paper, it's got the lab results, I must be right, okay? And you must be the stupid patient who doesn't know that your body just said, I don't feel good, I don't feel the same. And I actually had to learn that most of the time, if I was gonna have a debate about, I think your deed's too high, I think your deed's too low, the patient would usually be right. And they couldn't even tell me exactly what it was, but they just had this feeling, okay? Yeah. That is absolutely the same for the B vitamins as well. There is scientific literature that shows that the blood level has nothing to do with what the B stores are like in the body.